What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 12.3 Beta 2 to registered developers about two weeks after the release of iOS 12.3 Beta 1. And for those of you on the public beta program, this will probably be out to you probably either later today or tomorrow at the latest. So taking a look at the size here, you can see we do have a small update at 346.7 megabytes, of course, coming from Beta 1 here on my iPhone 10R. Now let's go ahead and check out the build number for this latest version. You can see there the build number is 16F5129D. And there actually are a few changes here in beta two. There's also a few changes that I missed in beta one that I discovered after using it for a couple weeks here on my iPhone XS Max, my daily driver. I have been using this on my daily driver device. So I will be talking about the performance, the battery life and things like that, the connectivity, all that stuff near the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. So a new feature in iOS 12.3 that I didn't cover in my initial beta one video has to do with AirPods. So you can see here I have the AirPods 1 and the AirPods 2. And if I actually take an AirPod 1 out and put it in the AirPods 2 case right here, take a look at the notification we get right there. So it's kind of glitching out right now. I'm not sure why that's happening, but you can see there was a lot of stuttering there and that was definitely a bug that was just introduced here in iOS 12.3 beta two. So that's interesting. But anyways, this is the message I was trying to show you. This is the new feature. It will actually show you now, you get a pop-up that shows mismatched AirPods. It says the AirPods in the charging case are different generations and do not work together. And it shows actually which one is the right one and which one is the wrong one. So it says the left, which is the first generation one is in the left and the right one is the second generation AirPods. So it's pretty cool that not only can it tell you that they're mismatched, but it can also detect which one is the wrong generation. And you can also see you get a flashing orange indicator here as well. When you do have mismatched AirPods, if I take it out, you will notice how it stops and it just turns green. And when we put the right one back in there, you'll see it turns green. And for some reason, this doesn't go away. You just have to click X and then it comes back up and shows it properly. So again, that is a new change here in iOS 12.3. Another new feature here in iOS 12.3 is that you can actually access the cellular settings here, even when you're in airplane mode. So before, when you would go into airplane mode, it would basically just gray out the cellular section and you couldn't even go in there. But now you can actually go in there and change the settings. Now, since I don't have a SIM card in here, you can't really see much. So I'll pull up my daily driver iPhone 10s Max here and show you what those settings look like. You can see here, I'm going to go Go into airplane mode and you can see I can still go into my cellular section right here and I can change all of these settings even though I am currently in airplane mode which again you could not do in previous versions of iOS 12. So that is a pretty cool little change here in iOS 12.3 and of course you guys know that iOS 12.3 brings a lot of changes to the Apple TV application including the new icon right there we talked about this in the initial beta but there are some additional changes here in beta 2 if you go ahead and click on this you'll notice that now on the watch now page we actually have less content on beta two than we did in beta one. You can see here, this is beta one over on the right side. You can see there's a lot more content on the watch now screen for whatever reason. And I like how we had sports on the front page in beta one, but now for whatever reason, we don't have sports in beta two on the front page. Now I'm sure this is, can probably just change dynamically like server side, but this is a change I noticed. I wanted to see the sports you know, schedule and things like that. But in beta two, I wasn't able to see that without actually going into, I'd have to go into sports right here. And then I would be able to see it. It wasn't on the front page like it was on beta one. But other than that, it seems like everything else is the same for now. Now I did notice that the search bar right here, the actual search where you type in things to search didn't show up at first. It would just say search there. And there wasn't actually a search bar to force close the application and open it back up. So that's how also how you can tell that we are currently on a beta version of iOS because there are little small bugs and annoyances like that from time to time. Now, speaking of bugs, there is a major bug that was fixed here in beta two, and this had to do with iPad users. So in beta one of iOS 12.3, a ton, pretty much all iPad Pro, iPad Air, pretty much anybody who had an iPad reported that there was issues with palm rejection. Basically, you couldn't draw or do anything without the iPad just picking up your palm on the bottom part. It would try to scroll the screen or something like that, and you won't be able to draw or you know take notes or anything you'd normally be able to do while you have your palm on the screen because it wouldn't reject the palm. But that has been fixed here, thankfully, in iOS 12.3 beta 2. So if you do have an iPad on the beta program, definitely go ahead and download this right away. And then, of course, another change comes within the settings general about. You'll see that the modem firmware got updated here as well. This is for the 2018 iPhones and went from 1.05.00 to 0.01. So just a minor upgrade there for the modem firmware, but that could, again, fix some connectivity issues if you guys are facing Wi-Fi or LTE or even Bluetooth connectivity issues. So now let's talk about the important stuff, the performance, the battery life, and the connectivity. So I've been using iOS 12.3 beta one on my daily driver, my iPhone XS Max here for about a week and a half. I went a few days without installing it, but I have been using it 
for about the past week and a half. So I can give you guys a really detailed idea of how it actually works in day-to-day -day usage. So the performance I will say is definitely better than iOS 12.2 for me. And if you guys saw my video, I think it was titled why iOS 12.2 annoys me or something like that. Basically uh, in that video, and I will have it linked up in the cards and down in the description below as well, if you didn't see that, but iOS 12.2 really started to annoy me on my daily driver, my iPhone 10s Max here, because it would stutter a lot. It would freeze up in the settings pretty much daily. And, you know, I would just get really tired of it because I, you know, such a, a fast device, the fastest iPhone out there. And it's not like I have a ton of, you know, stuff on here. I don't really have storage filled all the way up or anything like that. My battery was fine. Everything was fine. It was just stuttering and freezing up in settings. But with iOS 12.3, Beta 1, I have not had that at all. I haven't frozen up in settings one time on iOS 12.3 yet, and I don't have any of those stuttering issues at all on either my iPhone XS Max or my iPhone XR here. And when it comes to the battery life, I've actually been getting really good battery life as well. If I go to my last 10 days, you can see I'm averaging about seven hours and three minutes of screen on time and about 50 minutes of screen off time. And obviously I've been using my phone a little bit more than normal, but I will say that the battery is pretty much the same as iOS 12.2, which was great. If not, it's a little bit better than iOS 12.2, but it's very close to the same, which again is a good thing because I already talked about how iOS 12.2 has had the best battery life of any version of iOS 12 so far. And I think 12.3 is going to continue on that and be the best version for battery life. So I really hope that this is the case for everybody because I want Apple to keep the battery how it is. I don't want them to tweak anything that would affect the battery life because it's been terrific so far here on iOS 12.2 and now 12.3. Now, when it comes to connectivity, connectivity is also pretty good here on iOS iOS 12.3, I would say it's probably the same as 12.2, but I will say that I did have a random LTE signal drop the other day. Basically my LTE, uh, it showed I had LTE, it showed I had signal, but when I went to Safari or anything, it wouldn't load up any data and I would have to toggle on and off the airplane mode and then it would fix itself. So it didn't have anything to do with the signal or where I was. It was just a software issue, I guess. And I got out of it by just, again, toggling on and off airplane mode. And as far as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, I've not had any issues with either one of those so far. Everything's been working great. I remember in the early days of iOS 12, I had a ton of issues with that. So it's good to see none of those have returned here on my iPhone XS Max or my iPhone XR. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it here for iOS 12.3 beta 2 and also my update there on iOS 12.3 beta 1. Let me know how it's running for you. I really am interested to see how iOS 12.3 beta 1 has been running for you so far on your device. So definitely leave a comment down in the comment section below. Of course, you can also vote in the poll in the cards right now as well. And if you guys enjoyed this video, if you'd like to hear me talk about these iOS updates in my experience, make sure to hit that thumbs up button so I know you do enjoy them. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos on future iOS versions. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you soon.